Apple and Google have recently partnered up on a new contact tracing project to fight the coronavirus pandemic. In this video, I want to explore the impact of Google and Apple's collaborative contact tracing project and how it works. For those unfamiliar with the term, contact tracing is the practice of identifying individuals who may have come into contact with an infected person. Contact tracing is seen as an essential piece of the fight against coronavirus and a key step in bringing an end to lockdowns. While countries like Singapore and South Korea have seen great success using contact tracing, in the West, privacy issues have given many people cause for concern. To some, the idea that there would be a record of every person you come into physical contact with is an abhorrent violation of privacy. A list of those you have come into contact with is a very sensitive piece of information. How can we do contact tracing without violating individual privacy? Apple and Google have decided to take a shot at creating a solution. Together they have introduced a new way of doing contact tracing without violating privacy. The goal here is to warn people who have been potentially exposed to COVID-19 without keeping a centralized record of people's identities. The world found out about this new project on April 10th when Apple and Google made a surprising announcement. It was explained in a joint blog post that they would be releasing APIs that would allow interoperability between Android and iOS devices using apps from public health authorities. The post goes on to describe a plan for the next few months that includes a broader Bluetooth-enabled contact tracing platform that will be shipped in iOS and Android operating systems. According to the technical specification, they have created a privacy-preserving Bluetooth protocol that uses something called Bluetooth Low Energy for proximity detection of nearby phones. There are multiple measures taken to keep users anonymous. Information on the platform would be anonymized every 15 minutes to ensure users' anonymity, and no location information is obtained by the platform. When a device enables contact tracing, a tracing key is generated and securely stored on the user's device. From the tracing key, a daily tracing key is generated every 24 hours. As devices detect each other, a rolling proximity identifier is created and stored on the device. The list of proximity identifiers is kept solely on the smartphone. If an individual were to test positive for COVID-19, a diagnosis key is uploaded to a diagnosis server. In order to identify potential exposures, each client fetches a list of diagnosis keys and compares those keys to the proximity identifiers stored on the device. If the client makes a match between a proximity identifier and a diagnosis key, the client informs the user they may have been exposed to COVID-19. There are still many questions about the effectiveness of this kind of anonymous contact tracing. There is no doubt that companies like Apple and Google have a vested interest in reopening the economy. Any sort of contact tracing is going to raise privacy concerns but it could be a real step towards bringing an eventual end to the pandemic and even fight future pandemics. The ability to do contact tracing on mobile devices while protecting people's privacy and identities could hopefully become a valuable tool in the fight against coronavirus. Check the links in the description for more ways to help me make content like this. Thanks for watching.